In light of everything that's happening in the world, I thought I'd take an opportunity to do a series of short videos of things that you could actually do at home that will start to help improve your golf, even though you can't get out on the golf course to put it into practice. So the first one that I'm going to do is based on putting. Uh, it's a massive percentage of the golf game, and it's a, a part of the game that I feel is overlooked by many golfers. They're, a lot of people are so obsessed with distance, but uh, the, the real crux of it comes is, can we actually get that golf ball in the hole? So I'm gonna do a few different things that you should be practicing at home that will definitely help improve your putting. But before we start, I want to uh, think about the speed that we hit putts at. Is it important or is there something that we can do about it? Well, it's incredibly important. Now I've just uh, cut out a hole size here um, and we're thinking now about the speed of our putts. So does it matter whether the ball goes three foot past the hole and we try and get the return or is dead weight more important? Well, if you could only choose one of these two, the line that you hit the put on or the speed that you hit it at, which would you say is most important to you? Generally, we get a real mix of, of answers, 50-50, maybe 60, 40 favoring speed, but the real truth of it is speed is far more important than line. So what I've done here is I've just got three golf balls. Now if I bend down, and if I roll these towards the, the, the piece of paper, which is the size of the cup, um, if I roll these at the perfect speed, how many do you think would go in the hole? So if I roll these absolutely dead weight, what you would find is they'd all go in the hole. Now, if I rolled them too hard, we'd probably find that only the middle one goes in the hole. So if we've got perfect weight, gravity can grab the ball and drop it into the hole. But if the speed's off and you hit that put way too hard, it'll hit the edge of the hole and it'll, it probably won't go in. So you're probably shrinking the hole by up to 50% if your speed is off. So what we're going to concentrate on, on these few exercises is concentrating more on the speed of the putts and also what we should be doing a little bit with a putting stroke. So let's. Uh, so this little practice drill is about putting to the, uh, let's say the skirting board, I'm going to put to the, to the door frame here. And what we're trying to do is get this to just touch the door frame. We don't want to hit in and rebound in miles backwards and ideally we don't want to drop it too far short. So just get two or three golf balls, have a go, see if you can just literally drop it right at the, either the skirting board or in this case the door frame. So let's have three goes at that one. That was a little bit quick, but uh, not too bad. Just fractionally short, never up, never in, as they say. A little bit short, also. So, definitely worth practicing this one until you get really, really good at judging how hard you need to be hitting the foot. Okay, so the next challenge that I want you to have a go at get two T pegs. Um, if I said put them slightly narrower, than the width of a hole, just to make this challenge a little bit more difficult. Now, we know that uh, puts are six to eight feet. Uh, we, we might get them, we might, we might not get them, but uh, for generally, for amateurs from six feet, we're probably gonna miss one in two. Now, imagine if we could get that to two in three that we start to hold. That's going to make a big difference when you're on the putting green. So, my challenge is, I've got three golf balls here. Can we actually get three? two or three of these to go through the tee pegs without knocking them over. Um, I'll do this in real time, so I'm not going to cheat, I'm not going to suddenly put a tee back up. Hopefully I'll get one or two through, but uh, if not, we just have another go. Is that missed on the right hand side? One, and we make it 
it two out of three. Oh, nearly. So there you are, there's the stats there. Um, only, only made one out of those three. So if I was going to get better at putting, I want to be getting at least two, if not three of those through the tee pegs. Now this uh, challenge is, would be really good to, to do against a friend. Uh, if you've got a few hours to spare and you want to, you like a little bit of a, a flutter on golf, this is a good one to do. Uh, quite a lot of charity events do this one. So I've got, a, it's actually a 10 pound note. Um, first person to get the ball to stop on the 10 pound note or whatever, a dollars or whatever you want to use, whatever your currency is. Um, so if I pop that there and I would make it slightly difficult. So I'm going to go back. Uh, a few paces and let's see if we can roll one and stop it on the £10 note. So first person to do it keeps the money. So. Looks like I don't want this £10. Everyone missed in the same direction. Um, can be a little bit um, challenging this one, but I think do, do it against a friend or do it against your wife or your husband if you're watching this one and uh, it might, might take away a few hours. Um, and let's show you another one. So here's your next challenge. Should practice be more difficult than actually playing? Um, quite a lot of people, uh, a lot of pros, tend to make their practice much harder than it is in real time when they're on the golf course. Because if they can do it and the, and the challenge is more difficult when they get on the golf course, it really boosts their confidence. So this challenge is, again, you can get three balls, uh, one tee peg, and let's see if we can knock the tee peg over. I'm about six foot away from here, uh, but, but you know, go as far back as you want to, or as close as you want to. So if you can start to knock the tee peg over without bashing it, we don't want that ball going miles past. And uh, this is definitely gonna be more difficult than holding uh, a ball on the green. So let's have a go at this one. We'll take it. The tee's just gone on the floor now, so I'll reset that one. Let's have another go. Oh, just missed. But that would have still gone in the hole. Over this side. Brilliant. So I've just knocked two, two tees over out of three. Again, if that's a, imagine if you've got a tee at the back of the hole and you, you were starting to knock uh, knock the golf ball towards that tee, they're probably all going to start to drop in. But remember, pace is more important than line. So in this case, you've got to get both right, ideally. So I'll just show you another one. So another thing that often happens, when we do a short putt, people tend to start the club face offline. Uh, so what I've done now is I've laid down six tees that are equal distance apart. And the idea of this exercise is I'm about probably six, eight inches, a foot away, something like that, uh, half a meter. And the idea is I want to start my ball straight through the T line. Um, now, if I start to close my club face, I would hit the ones here on the left, or if I was opening the club face, they'll hit the T's on the right. Um, but the idea is, is can we get all three golf balls to go through the T's without them getting knocked over. Let's have a little go at this challenge. Don't worry too much about the speed on this one. This is a little bit more to do with the line. There's one. Two. Three. So if you, are, if you tend to miss those short putts, you know, that was only probably this far, I was to the end of the tees. But if you miss those short puts, this is a brilliant exercise to start to start your golf ball online rather than it going offline. And then we'll just finish this video with three things that we would like to see you doing when you're putting.
Okay, just to finish this, um, this short video off, three things that we like to see people do uh, when they're putting. But my advice is always, if you're really good at putting, don't change anything. But if you are struggling, these three things will definitely help you. And then we also need to think about your mindset. A uh, really, really important part of putting. So, three things that we would like to see. If I just hold this putter here and set this in motion, I don't think that would be the worst putting stroke you've ever seen. But if we stand way too far away from here, then the swing tends to become far more rounded. So our first piece of advice is, the more upright you can make your putter, the better. This is if you really do start to struggle with putts. Standing too far away from the ball at a dress is not really gonna be that helpful. So that's number one. Number two, hold the putter as lightly as possible. So see here, I'm just almost letting the weight of it just rest in my hands. If you start to strangle the putter, and because we've got that fear over it, you won't have a very fluid stroke and you'll definitely struggle with distance control. Quite often you'll leave the putt short and on those really long putts you wouldn't be able to get the ball to the hole because there's no flow to the putting stroke. So hold this as lightly as you possibly can. I probably at about one or a two out of 10. 10, we don't want to go there. And number three that we're looking for is to make the smoothest putting stroke that you can. So quite often when we see people putting, they have maybe a long backswing and a short follow through or a short backswing and a long follow through. It all looks a little bit jerky. So if this was a pendulum, I think you'd agree that this is swinging relatively even. So what I don't really like is long, short or short and long or really jabby putting strokes. So the smoother you can make the putting stroke, the better. Just start practicing that at home. Um, even, even worth looking in a mirror and, and practicing looking in a mirror so that you can actually watch your putting stroke. Just back and through, nice and smooth. That gentle acceleration rather than forcing it too much. If you're struggling with that bit, another great piece of advice is to practice putting with your eyes closed. Um, don't, you, it'll stop you overthinking, but it also gives you, it heightens awareness, so it gives you an opportunity to feel the putting stroke a little bit more. So, some things that you should definitely be working on there uh, throughout this video, but another good piece of advice would be, if you do struggle with putting, might be a bit more mental than actually physical. So maybe get a book. This one's uh, Putting Out of Your Mind by uh, Dr. Bob Rotella. Another incredible book uh, that you sh is worth reading is The uh, Extraordinary Putting by uh, Fred Shoemaker. Absolute wonderful uh, book that will give you an insight into the mindset and what you should or shouldn't be doing. Uh, getting rid of that interference, that negative thought that creeps in over those short putts that stops us uh, putting really well. So, so just books that you should read. There's probably a load of stuff on, uh, on YouTube about the mindset of putting. Uh, Dr. Carl Morris is doing some wonderful stuff with putting, so uh, worth having a look at his, uh, some of his podcasts, or having a listen to some of his podcasts and some, some nice video footage out there. Um, so, Anything that you can do at home is, I think, is not wasted time. It's well worth doing all these little activities. I know it can get a little bit boring sometimes, but uh, I, re I love this quote that I read the other day. It's don't practice until you've got it. Practice until it can't go wrong. Uh, a nice piece of advice that if you can ingrain a really smooth, grooved putting stroke that works for you, I think that's gonna uh, change your scoring when we all get back onto that golf course. As always, if I can be of any help, um, just send me a message, Julian, uh, Julian at Julian Mellor Golf School, or you can have a look at my website, julianmellorgolfschool.com. Uh, always happy to, to offer any help and advice. Uh, after this video, I'm gonna do a series, uh, a couple of other videos that will uh, give you things that you can practice at home that will help your golf swing and also help your chipping and mindset and uh, some other activities that we'll go through. Hope this has helped and thanks for watching. Bye.